Hello YouTube, Sentinel H here. Well guys, it's been a while, but as you can see I've been hard at work with my most ambitious project yet, the Fusion Power Plant. Hope you enjoyed the intro. Let's get straight into this. There's a lot to talk about. First of all, this is a fully functioning Fusion Power Plant. It's, uh, it's currently running, and it does work. It does run infinitely. So the first thing we have here is the uh, full carriage elevator. You might be able to hear those blocks being placed. This elevator utilizes the block breaker deployer method of adding frames to lower the carriage. Um, this is how you have to build it if you want the controls on the inside. You, as you can see I used uh, red red wire pneumatic pipes whatever um, to carry the signal through the walls of the carriage from these levers and you cannot put covers over them or they won't work. So this is how you have to do it. This, as you can see, is quite a long elevator ride. It takes us all the way down almost to bedrock. That's why I, you know, cut it short in the, the intro. Here we are at level 11. And remember to flip these levers back up. And this will go all the way back up. It's a bit jerky on the way up because of the way that the frames interact with your body, but it's pretty smooth on the way down. So here we have plasma storage. I can't quite reach the tanks from the walkway, but each one of these tanks stores 3.2 million millibuckets of helium plasma. There are six of them, and if you multiply the numbers out, uh, if all six of these tanks, six, if all six of these tanks are completely full of helium plasma, then this room will be storing 22 uh, billion uh, EU. So a bit about this room, um, I like the tank design with, uh, I like the shape of it and these tin uh, columns I think add a bit of uh, visual interest and depth. Um, inside of these are the pipes, the liquid ducts that transfer the helium plasma from the reactor uh, into the tanks. Uh, I put red lights on, yellow, red, yeah, yellow lights on them for, I guess for helium plasma, that's the color it is. and. Um, I'll do a tutorial on how to do this conduit if you're interested in that. But uh, I quite like the shape of it. Uh, it uses um, triple panels and slab strips, and uh, then it's attached to the ceiling with these sort of iron collars. I think it, uh, it looks pretty neat. Um, here we have some lamps. Uh, these kind of like office -y fluorescent lights. I like the look of them. I like how they came out. Um, I'm using glass covers on the uh, face of the 
lights to give it a bit of interest. And you'll never see it from the top normally, so that's not a problem there. And I like the um, the look that this gives. This is basalt paver uh, covers and then marble uh, panel strips. You see the walls have these indents to give it a bit of interest since this is such a large room. You need to put something on. I can't just have big flat walls in this size of a room. Bit of lighting air down there. Um, the game doesn't quite like uh, some of the lighting and the way it interacts with microblocks. Um, this here is now one of my favorite ways of, uh, of lighting. I really, really like it. Um, what this is, in case you're wondering, is, is white lamps with uh, unmelting ice blocks in front of them and then uh, cover strips. The unmelting ice blocks uh, give it a really nice look. It's not so bright if the lamps were one block forward. I think it would be too bright up there. But the way that that uh, makes it look from down below, it's just it's casting a soft glow and um, I really find that appealing. As you can see, if I fly down here, uh, we've got some scaffolds uh, holding up these uh, tanks and so that we can have downspouts under them. So inside of these tin uh, microblocks are the uh, pipes that take the helium plasma uh, to the generator room. Um, and they're controlled by uh, some wireless redstone. So you can decide whether or not you want uh, just these pipe uh, tanks being used or just these tanks being used or both of them or if you just want to store plasma. So let's continue. Um, these doors, very simple, really. They're the automatic door I showed you in the tutorial. They're just, they just have teeth on them, which um, they stay open for five seconds. And uh, I like the interlocking design. I think it, it adds uh, quite a bit of interest. Um, so here we are in the main reactor room. Uh, the fusion reactor, of course, is inside, uh, it's inside this ring. And then I've duplicated that up to the top of the room and uh, really glowy, really bright. I like it. Um, we had the pipe coming through the wall, carrying the helium plasma in that way. And then this room, this room takes forever to carve out. <laughs> and uh, we start curving up here. And then over here we start curving and we have another dome. So it's got a, quite a bit of curve to the ceiling. Um, I like it. I think it came out pretty well. And again, these lights. Now these lights in here tend to bug out a bit more than the other lights. Um, you can sometimes fix it by placing a block, but it doesn't seem to be working. If you place a light source there, it will reset the uh, lighting and make it work properly. Um, I guess it doesn't quite like the unmelting ice, but sacrifices. So what should we take a look at first? Um, first we'll head in here. Actually, no, we'll head into B room first. This is the one, the one room I didn't show in the intro. Basically because um, it's the same as A, uh, pretty much, and there's nothing happening in B right now. Um, B isn't on, it isn't being used, because, uh, well, there's nothing for it to do. Um, room A is producing fuel for the fusion reactor using the deuterium-tritium reaction, and room B is for is set up uh, for if you want to use the, uh, the other reaction the um, deuterium uh, helium 3 reaction which uh, in I don't like that reaction I don't like having to use a finite fuel source um, and in the unhinged pack oh, this this is ultimate uh, but in the unhinged pack now you can't use the tome of alkahest to try and cheat your way to infinite uh, end stone so um, I don't think that recipe is all that useful but it is there uh, if you want to use it that machine will automatically produce it so Let's go in here, and you saw what was up here, um, the computer cube, oh, the fusion control computer, um, the pipes coming out of the extractors, and some levers just to turn those on and off in case you want to turn them on and off. But down here, we have nuke access. And if we hit this button, we head down. And this elevator, I haven't built this before, but this is, I guess I would call this a floating platform elevator. There's nothing underneath it, it's just a, uh, what you see here, a 3x3, three three, um, single thick layer of uh, platform made out of uh, frames and it's just the engines frame motors that are in all the walls not a very efficient uh, elevator at all this would be really expensive but since there's bedrock straight underneath there and there's no room above to put us to put a uh, central column this is uh, this worked out well to fit the space so here we have the fusion pre-igniter um, at least it was the idea so this is an AESU. It's currently empty because it pumped all its in, uh, it sent all of its power through these uh, superconductor wires into the reactor. 
because I imagine that using a nuclear reactor is probably the best way to provide the uh, startup power for a fusion reactor. And I got this design off of the uh, Greg the IC2 forums, the Greg Tech reactors thread, but it doesn't work. This design is supposed to run infinitely, it says, but it doesn't. It overheat. It starts breaking down the components like immediately and it, within like uh, a couple minutes the components are red so I don't know do I just not know how these work because I don't think these are supposed to turn red um, so if this would work then you could use this to feed the reactor to get the reaction started as it stood um, I had to just use quantum reactors but if you are better at building nuclear reactors then just um, put in your own nuclear reactor down there and uh, this facility is uh, will be fully functioning uh, if you download it close this. I won't be putting out a schematic for this um, because it's so it's so big and it's underground so MC Edit would take ages to save it and it would take ages to import it. Plus there's so many microblocks in this thing that uh, they would just get completely screwed up and it would be terrible and a terrible hassle to fix. So I want to briefly talk about this machine because I am going to make a tutorial about it uh, whether you like it or not because this machine took ages to put together and get working right and I think it's really really cool. Um, but this machine f uh, completely automates the production of deuterium and tritium from water in a proper proportion to run the fusion reactor using uh, applied energistics, uh, factorization routers, and then of course the um, centrifuges, overclocked centrifuges, not overclocked centrifuges, and uh, electrolyzers, all with uh, three transformer upgrades in them. Uh, but again, I'll get into this in more detail in a the next video. Um, if we go into the access port here, we currently have a, a, a big surplus of deuterium and a nice uh, healthy surplus of tritium. Um, getting the levels balanced on this is, is kind of tough, but it's, it is running properly. Um, it's keeping a, a good healthy amount of empty cells. Uh, if this number started getting really, really, really high, like if, if I ended up with several thousand deuterium cells, then you would have to like use them for something else and put the empty cells back in. But this has been running for hours now and it, it's perfectly fine, so I don't uh, expect to have any real issues with it. So um, next video you see will be a tutorial on this device. It does require factorization, so... I thought originally that it would work in TechIt, but am I... Am I wrong in thinking that Tekkit isn't doesn't have factorization? I don't know. But uh, anyway, uh, the generator room, big G. This is my favorite room, just because I really like these. <laughs> um, I got uh, a picture off the internet that had something like this, and I built it, and uh, I quite like it. <laughs> um, I wanted to enshroud the uh, plasma generators because they're pretty boring looking. I didn't enshroud the um, fuel machine because I think it looks impressive enough on its own. Looking at this room now, it looks like I forgot to paint uh, some of these blocks, but that's not a problem. Okay, so this is energy storage uh, device. The um, it's glowy blue. I like to use teal lights to you know represent uh, power. If I bust through these iron blocks and these lamps, then you can see in here there's an interdimensional storage unit um, storing billion uh, U. It's currently very stable at this point right there with one of these engine bays on just running the fuel system so plenty 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 of power uh, if you do I used interdimensional storage units just because I was having so much trouble putting power into that machine but if you didn't want to use them you could put some other storage device in here and uh, you could run a wire straight up here to the surface to get power to the surface if you didn't want to use uh, interdimensional storage units but they're pretty handy and I try not to use them you notice in this place I didn't use any tesseracts or anything because I kind of like pumping things around manually but um, for the, the power was just giving me so much trouble and I'll explain why in a minute but you can see here superconductor wire coming out of these uh, generators heading into the center there are 14 uh, plasma generators in each one of these for a total of 28 and there are two plasma generators uh, up uh, at the reactor for a total of 30 which is the number of plasma reactors you can run off of a fusion uh, a fusion generator as far as I know so you never have to worry about um, uh, the power that's in this uh, system here is not being fed into the reactor the reactor is getting its own power from uh, its own dedicated plasma generator 
So you suddenly flip this switch and turn this light on uh, in the intro, and this switch, it, it, it cuts the... Um, this is the switch that, that uh, triggers the wireless receivers in the fuel room to send fuel uh, to the generators. So if you turn this off, these don't suddenly stop producing power. They will just stop re receiving additional fuel. So whatever fuel is in the rather sizable uh, fuel line going f all the way from the storage room all the way into here, and whatever fuel is still in the re uh, generators will continue to process. Um, but just turning this off lets you start storing up plasma uh, for a rainy day. So I quite like these. Um, this thing is pretty cool as well. Uh, if this room was bigger, maybe I could make something that looks more impressive. But I really, I really like the way these came out. Um, if you're wondering how this works, this how I got these, all these shapes. This is um, standard slabs, and then this is I think a um, it's either a triple panel, I mean, uh, or um, some other micro block in the thirds, so it sticks up just above that. And then this, this right here is like I think it's a triple cover and then a uh, slab sticks out just this far and you get this really interesting look uh, right there where it kind of, I think that's neat. So anyway, that's that. Uh, they each have their own switch. They each control one half of the fuel storage room. Pretty nice. So yeah guys, I um, hope you enjoyed this. I really hope you enjoyed this because it took ages to build. Um, that's what I've been working on since the last big build. Um, well, I've been working on this since the last um, Steampunk Let's Build episode. Uh, it's taken a long time just because it's so big and because it's so complex and getting the machinery to work was a real hassle. But it works, um, totally works uh, now. So uh, go ahead and download this and use it for what you want. It is built on a super flat world just like because it was the easiest way to do it. Um, my idea with this thing being underground is that you could very easily build a city or a factory on top of it and this would provide all your power and you wouldn't have to worry about uh, power generation up on the surface. Um, if you wanted to, you could even put a, uh, a teleporter in this place and somewhere else and you wouldn't even need to have, let's go up, uh, a visible entry on, on the, the top. So you could have like a hidden uh, fusion reactor, uh, fusion power plant, of course, if you start, if someone starts digging down in the general vicinity, their mini map will give it away. But um, that's that, guys. The, the fusion react, the fusion plant, uh, definitely my most ambitious build. I would say just because of how complicated it was. I've never built a fusion reactor before in my life, so this really was a first for me. Um, a lot of online tutorials helped out. Um, I'll have a link in the description to um, the wiki post. Well, well, or you can just wiki it yourself. Um, the FTB wiki for fusion reactors has the calculations uh, already finished of how many of each machine you need for the. Uh, automatic fuel supply, but I'll go into that in more detail when I actually build the machine for you uh, in the upcoming tutorial. So, really hope you enjoyed the fusion power plant. Um, more builds to come. Drop suggestions in the comments. Like, favorite, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of me. I really appreciate your support, guys. It means everything to me. Um, so, yeah, stay tuned for more of this. Um, probably some Seven Days to Die videos coming up, especially once that hits Alpha 2. Um, there'll definitely be more of those once it hits Alpha 2. Uh, let me know if you want some Terraria videos now that the new update's out, or um, eventually when, uh, well, what, what's it called, Starbound is out, I'm going to be hitting that pretty hard. But So you can look forward to that in the future. More Steampunk Let's Build at some point. Uh, according to my analytics, it's not really one of my most popular series, so let me know in the comments what you guys want to see more of. Um, Anyway, I'll stop rambling as I usually do. I've been Sentinel H. I am signing out.